Hi, welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about something that I'm really passionate about. If you've ever worked with me, you know that I'm really passionate about it. It is something called Code Blue. A lot of ICU nurses hate being on codes, and understandably why, because ICU nurses hate to leave their patients. But personally, I love codes, I love being on codes, and uh, I just wanted to give some tips and tricks that may be beneficial to some people who are just started being on codes or, or are nervous about their first time being on codes. So, when you go to a code, first thing that I do is I make sure I have my code card and that someone's setting up already, they're probably already on the chest, they're already doing CPR, make sure that someone is setting up the pads. And if someone's not setting up the defibrillation pads, you set up the pads, right? And now you, you break the seal of the code cart. And the first thing I do is I get three amps of Epi out and I set them up. Because the last thing you wanna do is be fumbling around when they say it's time for Epi. They're ready, they're set. If I ever give one, I set the next one up because you don't wanna run out, out of Epi and Epi comes quick in a code. So, I, what's the thought process in a code? What should your thought process be? After setting that up, the first thing to think of is, is there a pulse when you walk into the room? Is there a pulse? Maybe this patient's just hypoglycemic and you're gonna start pounding on his chest. Make sure that there's not a pulse. So there's no pulse. There is a rhythm like V-fib, V-tac, P-A, A-systole. So it is a lethal rhythm. Um, so there's no pulse. You start your CPR, push hard, push fast. And uh, change out every two minutes that is important because you get fatigued even though adrenaline's like pumping up you, you see it in people who love being on on the chest but they get exhausted it is exhausting so switch every two minutes with a fresh person when they switch it's time to shock this person right so you've done your CPR now it's time to consider shock is it a shockable rhythm meaning v-fib or pulseless v-tac is it one of the two Yes, it is. Uh, and remember, if it's asystole or PEA, um, you, you can't shock that. So it is a shockable rhythm. Good. Shock it. We go by 200, 300, 360. So the first shock is 200 unless ordered differently by either an advanced practice practitioner or a physician. Right? So shock at 200. Right after the shock, get right back on the chest. Okay? Get right back on the chest and start delivering quality CPR. After two minutes of that, you are definitely within the zone to give your first amp of epi. They'll probably call out, is it time to give epi? Yes, hand your epi over. Someone's going to give that epi, right? Now, after giving the, while giving the epi, it's time for a pulse check. Is there a pulse? Have we done something? Did the shock get them out of this lethal arrhythmia? Is there a pulse? No, there's no pulse. We're going to shock again. When you're shocking, what I do, what I've been taught, is I say I'm shocking on three. And make sure that everybody's clear. This is a high intensity situation. People kind of get in their own zone. I've done it myself. And uh, you don't, you're not really listening. So make sure everybody's clear. Shocking on three. One, two, three. And then you shock and shock delivered. And then people get right back on the chest. And then th now they're back in CPR. After the CPR, you do a pulse check again while giving epi. Epi can be given every three minutes. Um, hopefully someone's there telling you, all right, we're gonna give epi. So you do a pulse check in epi. Is there a pulse? No pulse, all right. A lot of times they'll start to consider amio. Uh, a lot of times they'll give bicarb. Um, you don't have to set those up. Just draw them up when they're told. Um, so there's no pulse, continue uh, with the code. Now you have to shock again, this time at 360. So you shock at 360. Everybody clear, shocking on three. One, two, three, shock delivered. And they get back on CPR. Some meds to remember here. Um, can you see that? Uh, atropine, we give one milligram. We go up to three milligrams. Push it fast. Everything in the code though, I feel like it goes without saying. I don't even have to tell you that. Push it fast, right? Uh, bicarb, we give an amps. So you'll have an amp there. Give an amp of bicarb. Epi is one milligram. Uh, each each push and then um, adenosine adenosine is six milligrams 12 milligrams 12 milligrams and we do it with a three-way flush we really have to push it fast so you set up the three-way flush you'll put your adenosine here and a flush here and you just open them up push the adenosine hold it and push your normal saline right the way I remember it is kind of funny um, and embarrassing but whatever I remember it as Running through the six with my woes, right? That Drake song, 
running through the six with my woes. Why do I remember it that way? Because six milligrams of adenosine, it has to run through. So I know adenosine running through the six with my woes, I gotta get a three-way stop cock and uh, I gotta push really fast. I gotta run through with it. Uh, so it's six, 12, 12. Um, and how do, what does adenosine do? Adenosine slows the heart rate down. So if they if they are tacky and we want to get them out of it, um, it slows it down. Adenosine, the S, slows it down. Um, and what does atropine do? Atropine picks it up. So that's kind of how I remember and differentiate between the two. And that's that's a code blue. Um, so do your best to remain calm. That's also super super important. Um, People are all amped up uh, during a code. Really just play your role. Hopefully everybody plays their role. Stay calm and avoid the fog of war, which is kind of inevitable in your first couple. It's hard to like really critically think and think things through because you're in this fog of war. After experience, uh, that'll, that'll start to fade. Uh, you'll still have it in certain situations, but it'll definitely be less. And uh, hopefully everything goes well and the patient gets the best outcome. So I hope this helps. Um, I need something to sign off with, and I don't know what, I don't know how to say bye.